Hey everybody, Ryan Jackson. Hope you're doing well. We're still in Article 120 for the load calculations, and in this video we're going to be talking about 120.6, which is for non-coincident loads. Uh, I think Panel 2 did a great job on this change. This is really more of a clarification than anything, but uh, I think it really needed to happen. So let's take a peek at what they did here in 120.6. So as we mentioned, Article 120, Branch Circuit Feeder and Service Load Calculations 120.6, Calculating non-coincident loads is now a general provision, and the allowances were clarified. So really two things happened here. Number one, they clarified it, which is great. But number two, by relocating it uh, from 220.60 to 120.6, it no longer applies only to feeders and services. Right? When you go to the 2023 codebook and you look up non-coincident loads, it's in 220.60. 220.60 is for feeder and service calculations. So really, this is a this is this concept should apply generally, right? This isn't something that's unique to feeders and services. It, it's something that could apply to anything. So by relocating it, that in and of itself is a technical change in this instance. A lot of times when we move something, eh, you moved it, right? You just changed the numbers. Well, this actually means something. So 120.6, non-coincident loads. If two or more loads are not likely to be used at the same time, then only the larger of the two needs to be considered for the load calculation. Now that's been in the code for quite some time, but like I said, it was only for feeders and services. Um, I'm gonna take the easy way out here and use air conditioning and heating, right? Because that's the kind of the most obvious one. You know, if you've got a heater and an air conditioner, is it likely that they're both going to be on at the same time? Well, the, the answer to that is actually maybe. You know, I don't want anybody saying, well, you can always take all the heating and all the air conditioning and whichever one is smaller, get rid of it. Mm, that's not necessarily the case. You could have a building where in some portions of the building the air conditioning is on and in some parts of the building the heating is on, right? So I, I don't want to just pigeonhole uh, the requirement and say it applies to heating and air. It, it can and it can also apply to a bunch of other things as well. Any loads that are not likely to be on at the same time, right? So air conditioning, heating, if we keep reading, when determining non-coincident loads, the rules of 120.11a must be followed for motor loads. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into 120.11a, but what it says is when you're doing your motor load calculations, you're going to take, generally speaking, if you have a motor and other loads or multiple motors, you're going to take the biggest motor at 125% plus all of the other loads on that circuit, right? So over here on the right, let's start there. I've got my compressor motor is 22.1. Sorry about that. Get my laser pointer here. 22.1 is the running load amps. I've also got a fan motor as part of that equipment, which is a quarter horsepower, right? So pulls 1.4 amps. I'm going to take the larger of those two, times it by 125%, which of course is gonna be the compressor fan. So 22.1 times 125% or at 125% is 27.6. On top of that, I am going to add my 1.4, and that's going to be a total of 29 amps. So that's my air conditioning. Then I'm going to compare that against my heating. Now, I've got two of these 5KW heaters. Let's say we're doing a feeder circuit right now. So I've got one air conditioner, two heaters. Which do I get to omit? Well, my two 5KW heaters, resistance load, right? So 5,000 watts divided by 240, nice and easy. And it has a very small motor, a quarter of an amp, right? So like an eighth horsepower motor. And when you go to 120.11a, it says for a tiny little motor like that, eighth horsepower or less, just forget it. Do it at 100% because who cares, you know? So we've got our 5,000 divided by 240 is 20.8 amps. We're gonna add the motor, which is a quarter of one amp here. So I got 21.1 amps per heater, but there's two of them on the feeder. So on this feeder circuit, I've got 42 amps of heat, 29 amps of cooling, and if those are not going to be on at the same time, then I get to remove the cooling load. Now, like I said, 
there could be instances where both of them are on at the same time, right? That it's not just a hard and fast rule that you get to remove the, the smallest of the heating and air conditioning. Usually you can, but not always. So when determining non-coincident loads, you gotta follow the motor rules like we just talked about. Here's the part of the change that I absolutely love. What is a non-coincident load? Well, for feeders or services, loads that are not likely to be on at the same time. Perfect, because that was always the question. Do you have to have some sort of mechanical interlock or something? You know, I mean, that could be as simple as a thermostat, right? If you have a thermostat and you know you turn it down and the air conditioner turns on, you turn it up and the heater goes on and the other one goes off. Well, cool, that that makes it easy. Um, but there could be motors, there could be all sorts of other things that are unique to a specific installation, and there's no way that the code can give you specific parameters on how to handle that. So it really leaves it up to the design professional. It says, listen, loads that are not likely to be on at the same time. So if you're designing a building, you can point to two different loads and say, look, this and this are not gonna be on at the same time. I talked to the owner, I know how this building is gonna be working and you're never gonna have that on at the same time as that. Cool, then you only have to calculate the larger of the two, right? Item two, for branch circuits, feeders or services, Loads that are prevented from simultaneous operation by listed means. All right, well, that could be a lot of different things. You could prevent simultaneous operation by a listed thermostat, like I said, and if it's on the same branch circuit, one's on, one's off, great. It could also be something like, a, like an energy management system or a power control system but it doesn't have to be anything as elaborate as any of that stuff. How about just a mechanical device like this that prevents both being on at the same time? Well, as long as that's listed, then we're good to go, right? You don't wanna do it with like a, a quarter 20 bolt going through the breaker handle or something. I mean, that, that's not gonna work. But if it's a listed product like this, that's all you have to have. And by the way, you can get listed versions of these. They're listed as uh, circuit breaker accessories listed to UL489 for uh, molded case circuit breakers like these. So really nice clarification. When do you get to count it as non-coincident? Well, anytime for feeders or services, you just look at them and say those and those are not coincident. There you go. For branch circuits, you're gonna have to have something that's listed to prevent simultaneous operation. And for feeders or services, you can use something listed to prevent simultaneous operation, although you don't necessarily have to, right? But for branch circuits, if you wanna use this provision, you're gonna to have to have something that prevents them from being on at the same time. All right, really nice clarifications there in 120.6. Probably not gonna change the way you wire a building, but it could change the way you calculate a building, and that could be a big deal. All right, so we're going to talk next in Article 120 about a really big change for dwelling units. And I think you're all going to be really happy with what the code making panel did. And uh, we'll talk about that in the next video. But for right now, when you're out there on the job, please be safe. And we'll see you on the next video.